Welcome back. In this module we'll be understanding the origins of lean and the set of conditions and series of events that led to lean thinking being created. I believe without understanding these set of conditions, some of the benefits and principles of lean could be misunderstood. The story of lean begins in the automotive industry. The invention of the motor car brought a new wave of consumerism. Within most people's lives, their second most valuable asset is their car, just after their house. In 1900, cars were made very differently to how they are today. They were built by craftsmen in their workshop, working as individuals or as small teams. The mechanics that worked there were highly skilled and made automobiles on a one-by-one -one bespoke basis. The trouble was, because the cars took so many hours and didn't benefit from any economies of scale, they were extremely expensive and only available to the rich. Customers would be willing to wait a matter of months to have their car produced, followed by additional months of tweaking and adjustments. There were some positives about the cars. They were highly bespoke and customizable. The downsides were the long lead times, the time between making an order and receiving it, the quality was unpredictable as each car was made separately and the cars were extremely expensive and only available to the rich. As craftsmen worked in silos, there was secrecy in the way they worked, all working independently. It soon became clear that there must be a better way of producing cars, a leaner, more efficient way. That's when Fred Winslow Taylor, an American mechanical engineer, sought to improve efficiency by separating planning and production functions. You can almost think of this like isolating the waste, allowing the planner to arrange the sourcing of material and parts, and the production worker to focus on assembling the machine. Fred Winslow Taylor started mapping the sequence of operations and steps required to build a car, measuring the time for each task. This scientific management style made vast improvements and he launched a new way of working, Mass production. Henry Ford then developed on these ideas and decided to make parts highly interchangeable and easy to assemble. By reducing the complexity of steps and standardising dimensions, he eliminated the craftsmanship and revolutionised mass production. He famously reduced the work cycle times of operators from several hours to a matter of minutes, meaning each operator would complete highly repetitive but efficient operations. Henry Ford was the first person to introduce a moving production line, a novel and lean idea. Remember, lean is about reducing waste, improving customer value and engaging people. What aspect of lean was Henry Ford impacting here? He was reducing waste, the waste of motion for operators. Instead of having to walk parts to the vehicles, the vehicles would move to the operators. This new way of working appeared to be the golden solution to craftsmanship. Thousands of cars were being produced each day, being parked outside the factory, waiting for a customer to order them. The lead time for cars was slashed, and Ford's Model T car was one third of the price of before, and parts could be easily changed or upgraded. This new way of working did have, however, some big downsides. Workers felt very alienated, completing inhumane, mind-numbingly dull and repetitive work, leading to union strikes and an unattractive work environment. A work environment that discouraged teamwork and where people would judge solely on their output. As operators worked with big machines, with piles and piles of stock, quality problems became very big, and more time was being spent repairing as opposed to getting things right first time. Because parts were being produced in batches of either hundreds or thousands, any defects identified in the next process would result in lots of extra repairing work. An attitude of us versus them, operators versus managers was formed, and any special knacks, techniques or secret improvements were kept secret to individuals at the fear they would lose their job if their secrets were told and their competitive advantage lost. Between 1939 and 1945 proved to be the deadliest international conflict of history, the Second World War, taking roughly 70 million lives. 
After World War II, Japan initially experienced extreme economic difficulty. All the large cities, with the exception of Kyoto, the industries and the transportation networks were severely damaged. A shortage of food continued for several years. In Japan, customers were very different from America and didn't want all the same type of car. This directly opposed Ford's Model T way of doing things, producing only one highly standardised car, famously in any colour as long as it's black. The difference was that in Japan, farmers wanted vans and trucks, people in cities wanted small cars, and wealthy executives wanted luxury vehicles. Toyota realised that customers wanted a choice of colour for their brand new car. Being able to provide them with this would increase customer value and give them an edge over their competition. The mass production way of America wouldn't work in Japan. They needed a much more flexible way of producing cars that would allow different models and colours to be produced on the same production line. With a lack of stable demand and no access to capital, Toyota was facing bankruptcy. They couldn't afford to have a large stock of cars waiting to be purchased. They needed to produce them only once they'd been ordered. Things were so bad for Toyota that they had to lay off a quarter of their workforce. In return, they promised all workers a lifetime employment guarantee and a gradual increase in salary based on their time served at Toyota. As operators were now lifetime employees, they were seen as assets as opposed to operational costs and focus was turned to developing their people, involving team members in improvements. Taichi Ono, an industrial engineer at Toyota, realised they needed to work in a different, more efficient way that involved their team members. Taichi Ono is now regarded as the founder of Lean. He developed a completely new way of working Cars were only produced once a customer had ordered them. Parts were made in a just-in-time fashion and in direct contrast to Henry Ford's way of working. Unlike Ford, where they would work at full speed to maximise output but then have to repair defective cars after they rolled off the line, Ono recognised this caused more problems. He decided to place a cord above every workstation, empowering any worker to pull the cord and stop the production line if they spotted a problem. The team would study the process and permanently fix it, and they continuously improved each process and the number of errors fell dramatically. Let's quickly summarise some of the biggest differences. Please compare the traditional way of working with the lean way of working. Traditionally, focus was placed on the output of a process, i.e. its result, with people blamed for mistakes and rewarded based on their production. Lean directly contradicted this, and focus was placed on the process, working to make quality, repeatable processes, with any problem being solved permanently. This meant multiple things. People weren't scared to raise problems, improvements were now celebrated as opposed to just performance, and the firefighting of problems was replaced with structured problem solving, that aim to target the root causes of the problems. The Toyota production system brought a new culture and way of working. Products weren't produced as fast as possible, but instead only at a rate that matched customer demand. Large batches were swapped with small batches that enabled flow, and long lead times were subsequently slashed. This new lean production system flipped the American way of working on its head and instead of having unordered cars taking up space and depreciating in the parking lot, cars were made at the exact same rate as demand. This new lean way of working relied heavily on the discipline of managers as well as operators. A mentality of rework was replaced with a pursuit of quality, and operators took pride in what they were doing, keeping their workplace organised, maintaining their equipment, and stopping the production line if they found a defect. Each defect was treated with care and operators would problem solve to find a solution to solve the origin of the problem. Lean is now widely adopted across a range of industries, from its roots in automotive to fashion, public services and healthcare. 
An example of some companies making great strides in their lean journey include Panasonic, Siemens, ASOS, John Deere, Nike and many more. Lean is not just applicable in large organisations, it's equally applicable in small organisations or startups. Anything from a small family-owned car wash to a salmon farm. Once you have an understanding of lean, it will change the way you see things in everything, whether you're at a restaurant or waiting at a train station. With the rapid advancements in technology and availability of data, lean has evolved since its inception, with new tools being developed to help in your lean journey. New trends, tools and methods such as Six Sigma, Scrum and Agile have introduced Lean to a much wider audience. However, they do rise and fall in popularity, but the fundamentals of Lean will never change. With the next industrial revolution, coined Industry 4.0, we're now seeing the further integration of Lean and technology and a new wave of robotics and automation. The Lean methodology continues to improve and available tools continue to grow and we're really excited to see where that goes. So let's recap what we've learned in this module. In the early 1900s was craft production. Cars were made on a very bespoke basis but they had extremely long lead times and were extremely expensive as well. Then came mass manufacturing and mass production and this completely changed that. Cars were much cheaper, they had much shorter lead times, but they did have some big problems. Workers felt very alienated, and the people involvement aspect of lean was completely missing. Products were made in large batch sizes, which caused big quality issues. And then after the war came the Toyota production system. This was a completely new, novel way of working. Cars were only produced once the customer had ordered them. Quality was embedded into the processes and people were involved to continuously improve. Now we're entering a new wave and a new era which is called Industry 4.0. This is all about data, robotics and communication between machines. Please join us on the next module where we'll be talking about waste, how to identify it, how to eliminate it and the seven different types.